Greetings everyone and welcome to episode 1 of my brand new TV series based on Amazon's Lord Ring show. In this series we're going to be looking at all of the kings that reigned in Numenor throughout the second age. And I'm doing this because the new TV series is going to be based and mainly focusing on Numenor. So it's going to be interesting to go look at Numenor during the second age and see what happened and then see what events that happened during the second age that could be shown in the TV series so we have an idea that what could might come up. So in today's episode we're looking at Tar Minyata who was in fact Elros who was Elrond's brother and he was the first king of Numenor. So if you like this content please can you like and subscribe and let's get into our brand new series and episode 1 which is Elros. Elros also known as Elros Tarminiata, the half elven, was a son of Erendil and Elwing, brother of Elrond, uncle of Eldan and Elrohe, and Arwen, and the first king of Numenor, ancestor to a line of kings, especially to the descendants of Aragorn, second Elisar. He had a strong friendship of elves, who were half his kin. So. He was the first king of Numenor and that's why he is episode 1. Now before we get into the second age and into his rulership, let's go into his background and look at his history in the first age. Elros was given the title of king of Numenor and he was born in 532 of the first age. He ruled from second age 32 to second age 442 and he lived for 410 years which was quite long but it's because he had Numenorean blood. He died in 442 of the Second Age and the realms he stayed in Numenor and his children were Vardamir, Timur de Mel, Manuendil and Antalakar. His parents were Erendil, Elwing and his foster father who we're going to talk about in a bit was Maglor. His siblings was Erwant who was his twin and his weapon was called Dramboleg. He was half elven, we'll be also talking about in a bit. He was from the house of Ingolfin, but then founded his own house called the House of Elros. Let's start off with his background in history and in the first age. So in 532 in the first age, Elros was born in Alverinien, in the sort of the third kinslaying by the sons of Feanor, Elros and Elrond were taken captive by Maglor and Maedros. Later Elwing, their mother, cast herself into the great sea and vanished from Middle-earth. From then on, Elros and his brother were raised by Maglor. And if you guys don't know, Maglor is one of the sons of Feanor. They were both raised in love, for Maglor was not proud of his deeds. It is nowhere told whether or if Elros and Elwin actually left Maglor, but it could be assumed that at the time of Aonri's arrival they took part in the war and that was the War of Wrath at the end of the First Age. In 547 of the First Age, the host of Aonri and their valour were seen shining upon the sea and the noise of Aonri's trumpets rang over the waves. Eonre summoned all of the elves and all of the men from Hithlum to the south, fighting them for the great war against Melkor that was now to come. So this was Elros and Elrond's first taste of battle and war, and they would see a lot of this later on in the ages. Now let's get into the second age and the bits that will hopefully be shown in Amazon's Lord Rings TV series. So after the War of Wrath ended, because Elros and Elrond were half elven, and only in these two remained the line of heroic chieftains of men in the first age, the Valar gave to Elrond and Elros the choice of which kindred they chose to belong to. And just said before, due to having strong men blood in them. Elros chose to be of mankind, and as such he was granted a great lifespan. And this is where the long lifespan Numenor came from. Aeonwe came among the faithful humans and he taught them and gave them wisdom, power and a life longer than any other of mortal race. But none of the high men ever reached the age of Elros. 
and a great land was made for them, not a part of Middle Earth and not wholly separate from it. This land was Numenor and Eros was its first king. So this shows Eonwe out of being, due to him being so nice, he made and founded Numenor and Eros was king there and he was the longest ever reigning king. Numenor was physically made and raised from the depths of the sea by the Valar and was raised by Ose, established by Yule and enriched by Yavanna. The elves brought flowers and fountains from the Avolone and wall gardens in Numenor so the gardens were made beautiful due to the elves. The Valar called it Andor, the land of gift and its own people called it Westerness for it lay west of all the inhabitants by mortals. So Numenor sat between the Undying Lands and Middle Earth. When Elrond was 90 years old, he ascended the throne of Numenor in the city of Armenelos, where he was inscribed as Elros Tar Miniatu, so he was given a new name, and the kings after him would have Tar before their name. The sword Aranruth, which was once his great great grandfather Thingol's sword, the serpent ring, and Dambolleg, the axe of Tor, became heirlooms of the kings of Numenor, so all those different types of weapons that were famous during the first age. During his time as king, Aros had four children and an unnamed mortal wife. Unfortunately, Aros died in 442 of the second age after ruling Numenor for 410 years, and this is where his story ends, but his line continues. Find out next episode if you don't already know who the next king of Numenor was after Elros, and probably most of you will probably know, but still come and watch next episode as we're going to do nearly all episodes are going to be the line of the Numenorian kings until the dent eventual downfall of Numenor. So there's quite a lot of episodes and this is only episode one of this long series. So if you want to see the entire history of Numenor when I go through it with each episode, please like, subscribe and I really enjoyed making this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. But until the next video, my friends, goodbye.